Good morning and welcome to today's session of Imagine America Radio, our continuing Career College Exposition webinar series. My name is Lee Doubleday and I'm with the Imagine America Foundation. I'm excited about today's career topic, the overlooked value of technical school certificates and associate degrees sponsored by Universal Technical Institute or UTI. UTI is this country's leading provider of high quality career focused education at 16 locations nationwide UTI is also a 21-year sponsor of the Imagine America Scholarship and Award Programs, having provided admissions-based financial aid to more than 16,000 enrolling Imagine America students. Without taking valuable time from our presenter, let me refer any and all inquiries about the Imagine America Foundation or Scholarship Program and how your students can apply for an Imagine America Scholarship to our website at www.imagine-america.org. Since our beginning in 1999, Imagine America remains a leading sponsor of scholarship aid to enrolling high school students. However, our country faces a serious shortage in certified technicians. We hear from employers in virtually all sections of the country desperately looking for qualified employees, so we need to do more. Our partner in today's presentation is Universal Technical Institute, and joining us today to discuss in detail the looming technician shortage and how UTI is helping meet this need is Dr. Stephen Quad. Dr. Coyle is a nationally recognized expert in this area with an extensive K-12 background. But before turning the program over to Dr. Coyle, let me outline today's agenda. Today's session of Imagine America Radio will be 30 minutes maximum with question and answers at the end of the presentation. All participants can submit questions while the presentation is in session via the Q&A or the chat feature in this Zoom meeting. At the end of the presentation, I will then present any questions offered by the participants and we'll address as many questions as possible and provide written responses and follow-up emails if necessary. We will have a hard close at 10.30 a.m. So without taking any more time out of today's presentation, let me turn today's session over to Dr. Stephen Coyle. Dr. Coyle, floor is yours. Well, thank you, Lee, and good morning, everyone. I just want to thank you for taking a few minutes out of your busy morning to uh, spend it with me. Um, I'll just get right into the presentation. I, I'd like to talk first about uh, just a little bit about, about UTI. Uh, we are the leading provider of technicians uh, in the transportation industry. We now have 16 locations nationwide. I love saying that because for so long I had to say 12, but uh, we've added two new campuses in Austin, Texas, which will open in April, and then our campus in Miramar, which will open in July. But we also are celebrating our newest, um, our newest partner, and new, our newest member of the UTI family, and that's MIAT. And uh, the, uh, they have two locations in uh, Canton, Michigan, which is where we're gearing our webinar today is towards the northern part of the United States and also in Houston, Texas. So we're real excited about, about, that, um, about that new partnership and, and uh, all that's going to entail. But the real reason why I want to talk to you about our nationwide locations is this is very important for our students because when they're looking for uh, careers upon graduation, they literally have the whole country at their fingertips. As you can see, we have a nationwide presence. You'd be hard pressed to walk into a dealership and say UTI and they wouldn't know who we are. Uh, but it also gives someone an opportunity. So if they go to school at, um, in, in Canton, Michigan or in California or in New Jersey, they could literally go across the country and, and uh, seek employment because we're, we're located in such a wide array that we can help them to, uh, to uh, get into their new career. So it definitely gives our graduates a huge advantage. Uh, I always talk about our, our eight great STEM programs, but that's now doubled uh, with the acquisition of MIAT, but our basic programs are auto, diesel, collision, motorcycle, marine, NASCAR, CNC, and welding. And then, of course, we're going to move on into aviation, robotics, HVAC, uh, wind and solar power, non-destructive testing, just to, just to name a few of them. So we have a wide, a wide variety of STEM careers. You would look at this page, you think, well, okay, so I got to pick something there. R literally, there are hundreds of career opportunities within this page. For instance, someone might say, I really love cars, I love being around cars, I love everything about cars, but I really don't want to work on them. Is there anything for me in this industry? And I, my answer would be simply, yeah, you go into the insurance industry, be a claims adjuster for an insurance company. You know, when you hit a deer, you see all the dents and dings on the outside, but what you don't see are all the computer components, all the sensors that were damaged on the inside. 
and the trained technician would uh, would know to look for that. I often say, you know, you can't hit a possum today for under three thousand dollars because of all the technology that's on these on these vehicles. So that's just one example of a, of a career opportunity, and there's just literally hundreds of others um, that uh, that students can pursue in in this industry. And then I love talking about our industry relationships. These are, I love to say, the big dogs of the industry. I, I tell uh, school counselors a lot, we're not training students to go to work for Jiffy Lou. We're going to work for you know, BMW, for Lexus, for, uh, for um, Mercedes-Benz, you know, just to name a, a few. And you can see there's over 35 here on this page. These are all strong, stable companies. And you know, they offer great benefits, they pay well and they're star for technicians. So it's a great partnership for us to have this relationship with the industry. Now, with all that out of the way, what I'm really here to talk about is you and talking about your relationship with your students, talking about your relationship with the P word, yeah, parents, and then with each other. So I, I like to start off talking about skills. You know, uh, when we think of skills, we usually think of hard skills. Yeah, learning, you know, knowing how to work on a car, how to work on a truck, how to weld, how to plumb, how to build a house. You know, though we think of those as skills, you know, the hard skills. But what we often overlook are the soft skills, which are equally important. I can't emphasize that to you enough. Those are equally important. And we put a strong emphasis on that at, um, at UTI. You know, the communication skills, this, the people skills. You know, face it, you, if you've been out anywhere, where has customer service gone? You know, it seems like we've forgotten what that is. And that's something we, we really stress. For instance, we can teach a student how to work on a car, how to work on a truck, you know, how to work on a motorcycle, but they have to be able to convey that to their customer so that when they walk out and meet with them and say, okay, I've diagnosed the problem with your car, with your truck. Um, here's what it's going to take to fix it. And here's how much it's going to cost. You know, you have to be able to convey that information to that customer and the writing skills when you have to write all this up. So I can go on and on, but these two go hand in hand with each other. You cannot say one is more important than the other. And we have to remember, too, what are employers looking for? They're looking for skills. What do you bring to the table? That's what they want. This is a statistic that might surprise you just a little bit. Nearly all certificate programs, meaning 94% to be specific, and almost three out of five associate degree programs are awarded in career-oriented fields. You may think your students are going off to school to get that bachelor's degree or then go on and get their master's degree. You, you may be wrong on that. Many students are looking for quick, uh, you know, a quick answer. You know, you think about students today. They are, they are very much in the present. Now they want it. They don't want entry. They want middle management. They want to get right into it. And so we have to be aware of that. And that's one thing, you know, I'm, I'm an old coach. I used to have to know my players, know who I could motivate differently. And you all have, have to know your students because your students are all different. Some are looking for that longer program where they could go to school for five, six, seven years and they could handle it. But many of your students cannot. They want something quicker. So that's something to keep in mind. And then going on the same lines, about 50% of students taking undergraduate coursework are enrolled in certificate and associate degree programs. We have to look at this for what it is. You know, <clears throat> there, there is definitely a value to competency-based credentials, to certificates, to diplomas, and associate degrees. For so long, we put that you know, that such a, a um, emphasis on the bachelor's degree and then going on getting the master's degree and then going on getting the specialist and the doctorate and all that. Well, if that is their career pathway, then obviously they need to go that way. But if it's not their career pathway, then we need to put emphasis on these, these shorter programs, which are proving to be just as valuable or sometimes even more valuable than what we might think of as the traditional education. When you're looking for a technical certificate program, here are three things I would advise you to look for. Number one, look for the industry relationships. Number two, look for occupationally focused curriculum. And then number three, look for the employment assistance. Now, let me go back through these. Industry relationships, 
That's the screen I just showed you a few, a few slides ago. The industry relationships are huge, you know, because that's who you're preparing the students to go to work for. So having that partnership with, uh, with industry is going to come in handy later when we're helping that student to get, to get, uh, to get employed. Uh, plus also having the industry relationship gives us an idea of what they are looking for, what they need. Occupationally focused curriculum, as I said a while ago, what are employers looking for? They're looking for skills. What do you bring to the table? What do you have to offer? You know, and so the occupationally focused curriculum is what they're looking for. The more the student knows coming in, the less that the employer has to teach them, the less expense that's going to be involved. So occupationally focused curriculum obviously is very important. And then finally, employment assistance. I mean, what's the student going to school for in the first place? They're going to school to get into a career, something they love to do, something they wanted to do, and something they can make a, you know, a good living at. They want to have a house. They want to have a car. They're going to have a family. So that employment assistance is very important, too. Also remember, these all go hand in hand with each other. It's tough to have great employment assistance if you don't have those industry relationships. And... <clears throat> It's tough to get students employed if you're not putting students out that employers are looking for. In other words, the occupationally focused curriculum. So all of these go hand in hand with each other. So when you're looking for a technical certificate program, if they don't offer all three of these, it might be time to look at a different program. I'm going to switch gears now and talk to you about a program that we're very excited about. It's called IGNITE Worldwide. IGNITE is an acronym. Inspiring Girls Now in Technology Evolution. There's been a party going on for years, and it seems like girls haven't been invited, and that's in STEM careers. Sad. What we're doing with this is we're opening doors for girls for opportunities in the STEM trades. They can do this. Half the population is female. Then why do we have such a low percentage of females in STEM industries? You know, UTI is, is an example of that. About four, four and a half percent of our student population is female, and we want to change that. So that's what uh, uh, Ignite Worldwide is doing. It's offering students an opportunity, offering girls an opportunity to get into the STEM trades. I love their mantra. You can't be what you can't see. Think about it. When is the last time you saw a female welder? When's the last time you saw a female auto or diesel technician? When's the last time you saw a female plumber? When you're driving down the road and you see that work crew that's working on the roads or bridges or whatever, how many females do you see out there? And then when you do see one, it's like, oh, wow, look at that. They, they get a girl working for them. Like it's a novelty. It shouldn't be a novelty. It should be reality. We should expect to see more women in these. But once again, as I just said, you can't be what you can't, you can't see. And, and I, I love that because it, it really sums it up very well. So what we do with Ignite is we offer this opportunity for them to be, to see so they can be. Um, it's a four part process. Uh, we've had three of these at our campuses so far. We're actually going to be hosting a virtual one on March the 15th that we're very excited about. But we've, we've hosted three at our campuses so far. We have not had less than 100 girls at each one of these events. So we're very excited about this. The first thing that we do is we have these events we form a panel of women in STEM. We take uh, some of the top females in the STEM industry and we assemble a panel for these girls to ask them questions. You know, they're not difficult questions, things they want to know like, hey, how did you get started? Did people make fun of you? Were you scared? You know, things like that because these girls are wanting to know this. They want to know what's available out there and how difficult it's going to be for them. Then we encourage them to go on field trips. That's why we bring them to our campus so they can see what a true STEM school is like, you know, get to experience that. But we also encourage them to go to other companies and, and locations to see what's, um, what's out there. Number three, we do workshops with them. Once again, how do they know if they're gonna like welding if they've never gotten to do it before or if they're gonna like working on a car? So we, we offer them workshops where they can actually experience this. You know, We have welding simulators. They're not gonna get hurt on these, but it gives them a chance to see that, hey, I can do this. Hey, I'm pretty good at this. You know, And just put some ideas into their head. 
And then number four is we encourage the girls to go to conferences, to attend breakout sessions where they get to be around other girls just like them. So they see that they're not weird. They're not the odd person out. It's like, oh, it must be something wrong with me that I want to be a, you know, a, a diesel technician or that I want to be a motorcycle technician. You know, I, I want to I want to work on planes, um, you know, something like that. Th they're not. They're, there's other girls out there, too. So it's strength in numbers, I guess, is what you might say. So really, you know, it, it works very well. It gives girls an, an opportunity. And the responses we're getting is, is really overwhelming. Uh, these girls are so excited to get these opportunities. As you can see there, it's an award-winning program. It continues to grow. Um, the, you know, the National Science Foundation, the Anita Borg Social Impact Award, the Department of Education, you know, is behind this. So it's, um, uh, it's a very important program, and we're very proud to be, to be part of this. Uh, Kathy Rogeveller is the, is the uh, founder of this. She started this in Seattle, Washington, and um, it's, it's really taken off. We, we got to uh, meet with Kathy and, and talk about how we can partner together. This is one of the statistics that really got us excited. In 2013, in the Seattle area schools, less than 5% of the girls were involved in STEM. Three years later, that jumped to over 50%. That, that really got our attention. But once again, it shouldn't be that surprising. If you give girls the opportunity to see what's out there, they're going to come. They're going to they're want to be involved in this. You know, we're, we're being more and more. When I'm out traveling, I'm running into more and more females that are involved in STEM, STEM trades. And it's exciting to see that. So I think this program is going to do nothing but, but continue to grow. One of the things that we love to do is we love to be involved uh, with, um, with student groups, uh, with foundations, with industry. We want to be involved to give students resources to help them, you know, for their, for their, uh, for their educational needs. We partner with uh, FFA, with Hot Rodgers of Tomorrow, with Skills USA, with Top Tech Challenge. This is an opportunity for us to offer scholarships to students so they can make their education more affordable. Um, it's it's a um, uh, these these programs are are amazing because we have a lot of students involved in them, and uh, we get to work work uh, up close and personal with these students to get to know them and um, and then like I said, offer them scholarships. We also work with foundations like, for instance, Imagine America that's um, helping us with this today. We have a 21 year relationship with Imagine America, and we offer. Uh, literally thousands of dollars of scholarships through the foundation. But it also gives us an opportunity to reach out to you as educators through these webinars, through the podcasts that we do. So it's a, it's a great platform and they're, they're so involved in career training and uh, we, we love partnering with them. And then finally with industry, as I mentioned earlier, we, we get very heavily involved with industry. Our newest partner is AGCO uh, that, that we're very excited about. Uh, getting into uh, the agricultural industry for the first time, really, really deeply. Uh, last fall, I was at the National FFA Convention, and we were right there with uh, Agco and Fent Tractors. We had a huge booth, a 40 by 80 booth and a 10 by 40 booth. We had like three tractors. We had a road gator. We had a planter, all this. And students just flocked over to our booth because they were interested in these things. But what it shows them is how industry and education go together with each other. It's very important for students to understand that. It goes back to what I was talking about, having skills. You know, a student can go to work right after high school and, that, you know, some are going to be successful. But the more skills you bring to the table, the more marketable you are. So that, that uh, FFA convention was a great way for students to see how, you know, working with a school and then working with the industry, how the two go hand in hand with each other and uh, developed a great partnership. And that's something we're gonna continue to do uh, in the future at FFA and, and other conventions as well. We offer over $15 million in sponsored scholarships and grants. Um, but what I really love to talk about uh, is our TRIP program. If there's anybody on this call that can give me any hints on how to get students to fill out scholarships, please send something to me because I'd love to see it. 
uh, and you you all know what I'm talking about. I, I ask this question all the time when I'm speaking to uh, counselors across the country, and I always get a chuckle then because we all uh, deal with that. They just don't want to fill out uh, scholarship applications. But the TRIP program seems to be something that works very well for us. We're very excited about this. TRIP stands for Tuition Reimbursement Incentive Program. It, we have literally hundreds of dealerships across the country that help our students. They need technicians. They need vets. So they have to find some way to make their dealerships stand out. So they offer things like student loan repayment assistance, high, hiring incentive packages, tool purchase assistance, sign-on bonuses, tenure bonuses. They offer these packages anywhere from $10,000 up to $50,000 uh, to help students to get to get started into their new career. So it seems to work because it gives students something to work for. So um, a, a great opportunity for students to have their education subsidized. Two key takeaways I have today for you. Key uh, uh, takeaway number one, high school counselors and educators can strengthen all post-secondary education pathways, including certificate programs. That's a fancy way to say, this is no longer plan B. This is no longer the backup plan. Well, hey, I know you're going to go to vet school. If it doesn't work out, oh, you can always be a, a diesel tech. Oh, you could always work on motorcycles. Oh, you could always, you know, maybe you get into robotics, do something there. That'd be easy. You know, that's not true. These are high, highly trained technicians. And to these students, this is plan A. And we need to recognize that as educators. We no longer need to be pushing students into something they don't want to do, that they don't want to be. Often ask counselors, you know, when's the last time you ask your junior or senior, what do you want to be when you grow up? We ask them when they're little, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, and so why do we stop asking that? Let's listen to our students and what they want to do. And many of your students, this is what they want to do. They want to be a, um, you know, a, uh, uh, work on uh, boats. They want to work on motorcycles. They want to work on on uh, HVAC equipment, you know, all these, they, they want to do these things. So we cannot treat it anymore as the backup plan. This is plan A to them. And we need to recognize that. That also helps you with your parents too, because the parents of these students, they want their kids recognized too, just like we do the others. So it's important for us to do that. And then the second takeaway, higher education leaders are instrumental in enabling students to acquire education beyond high school. Remember what I said earlier, what are employers looking for? They're looking for skills. What do you bring to the table? And But those skills, it may not be a bachelor's degree. It may not be a master's degree. It may simply be competency-based credentials, a diploma, a certificate. When you go to get your car worked on, you go look at the picture frames on the wall. You don't expect to see that person has a doctorate in brakes. You're looking for ASC certification that they can fix your brakes. So that's why it's important that we understand and help students to understand you do need school uh, skills. You may, you know, you may want to go to work right after high school. That's fine. And you think I don't need them. I'll learn as I go. And that's an option. That's a tough option. You know, skills are very important for uh, students to be successful. I'm a retired educator. I know what you guys do on a daily basis. Um, I know the importance of school counselors and the role that you play that, um, you're talking to the students about the, the career supply and demand. You're talking to students about scholarships. You're talking to students about career readiness, career pathways. You're giving them ideas. What do we wanna do? We wanna partner with you. We want to we want to back you up on this. That's why we do things like we host students at our open houses that we have. Um, we, we have those periodically throughout the year. We want students to come in. We want them to bring their parents, we want you all as educators to come as well. I also host events. I host LBIs through ASCA, uh, through local uh, state counselor associations. Um, we're becoming very heavily involved with the Michigan School Counselor Association and those up in the northern part of the country where we don't have campuses other than our MIAT campus at, at, uh, in Canton. So we want to make sure we spread the word as well. So we want to give you opportunities to come into our school, but we will also come to your school. We will come visit you. We, we offer a complimentary buffet of opportunities, as my colleague Jerry Elner loves to say, in um, that we can show students career pathways, career readiness. We can show them scholarship opportunities. We have all these things available to them. And as I said, they're complimentary. They're free. 
I know you love the word free because I know what your budgets are like. You don't have them. Um, we'll share things with them. We, we will um, we'll talk to them about career opportunities. We want to speak to all of your students because we can speak to all types of career opportunities, not just UTI. We want to talk to them about everything that's available to them and the scholarship opportunities that, that they have too. So uh, I also do uh, professional development. If you want to do something like that, once again, those are complimentary. UTI pays, pays all my expenses for that. So we would love to work with your school districts. If you have an opportunity that uh, you'd love to have a departmental meeting or something, we would love to be involved with you. And then finally, this is my contact information. This is my email address. You had my phone number earlier. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to reach out to me uh, in, in either one of these methods. Give me a call if you want. That's fine, too. I'd love to uh, hear your comments, your suggestions. See if you need help in certain areas that maybe, maybe I can be of some help to you. As I said, I work with counselors all over the country. I work with ASCA. Um, and uh, so we're just here to help. Anyway, I just want to thank you again for spending a few minutes of your time uh, with me today and wish you the best of luck for the rest of your school year. Thank you. All right. We are now going to open this up for the Q&A portion of our presentation. Um, Dr. Coyle, the first question this person wants to know about the FAFSA. Now, does UTI offer federal financial aid for students that qualify? Yes, we are Title IV funded, so we do uh, ask students to fill out a FAFSA to see if they qualify for financial aid. And then what we do is after that's completed, then we pair them with a financial aid advisor that will work with the student and their family to come up with a package that, that, that's supportable for that, uh, for that family. Because we, we know that uh, there's lots of different opportunities out there. There's lots of different options to get your education paid for. So we, we work very hard to make that happen for each individual family. Okay, and um, can you talk a little bit about, this is a question we get often, it's about comparisons to community college programs. Um, can you talk a little bit about the difference between going to school at UTI versus um, the local community college? Sure, I, I get this question all the time. It's a fair question. First and foremost, you need to understand that we are not, uh, we're, we're not the same. A community college and UTI are not. Many, uh, many educators will say that, oh, yeah, it's the same thing. Just go there and say, it. no, we're not. As I've tried to illustrate to you, we're very much tied into industry. We, we work very hard. But there, there's really three main differences between, between us. Number one is the time you're going to spend in school. At the community college, you're going to be there two to three years. You know, they, um, uh, you're going to have, you know, four, maybe six semesters you're going to go. At UTI, you're going to be here, you know, anywhere from nine to uh, 17 months, give or take, uh, depending upon the program that you're that you're going to go into. We don't take spring breaks. We don't do the summers off. We try to emulate what is happening in the industry so that students are prepared when they go into it. So that's first the first uh, item. The second one is the relationships with the industry. As I showed you, we have over 35. There are community colleges out there that will have one, maybe two, sometimes three. We have over 35 relationships. So definitely, if you're looking, you know, if you know what you want to do, we're not the school to come to if you're just trying to find yourself and you're exploring options. We're looking for students that know what they want to do. They know what they want to be. And so they come in and we get them into that program as quickly as possible. And yeah, then finally. Yeah, I was just going to mention that uh, it sounds like you're, you're kind of talking about two different types of students. Am I right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is because when you're, you know, like I said, oftentimes students will go to the community college because they don't really know what they want to do yet. So they go and to kind of explore their option. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not putting it down at all. Some students need to do that. We have the more career focused student. They know what they want to do and what they want to be. So true. And then the third option or the, the third difference, I think, is the trip package that we offer. That's a phenomenal program. It gives students a great opportunity, but there's a catch. They're not going to just give these packages out to just anybody. You've got to earn it. You've got to show that you've got good professionalism, good attendance, a good work ethic. BMW isn't going to hire just anybody. They want the best. GM wants the best. Ford wants the best. So they're looking for great students, but it gives students an opportunity to have their, their education taken care of for them. Uh, but, but as I stress there, they have to earn it. Yep. Yep. Good point. And uh, I agree with you. I mean, we're, it's it's just a night and day difference between the two. And it's on, honestly a different type of student that would 
uh, be going to either of those two schools. But um, just a few house cleaning items here before we close. Um, number one, we've recorded this session. We'll be forwarding this to all of our registrants. We'll also be placing it on our website, which again is www.imagine-america.org. Uh, and there is a quick follow-up survey when you leave this meeting. If you wouldn't mind just providing us with some feedback, that would be much appreciated. Before closing, I just want to thank our participants for taking time out of the busy schedules to join us today. And I'd also like to thank Dr. Coyle for sharing with us today's presentation and encourage each of you to contact him directly with any future questions that you may have. And I will include Dr. Coyle's contact information in the email that I send to you with the link to this recording. On behalf of the Imagine America Foundation, Dr. Coyle and myself, I want to wish you all a great rest of your day and goodbye. <laughs>